so far in this series, we followed the development of the organ from the ancient world to the modern world. But what do we think about it now, at the end of the 20th century? What I can tell you is, it still does have a passionate following. For some people, the power of the organ is still irresistible. Take her out, Jacques. That was a lot of fun, Jack. Well, thank you, thank you. We try to mix uh, anything mechanical up here. Yeah. Now show me some of your other hobbies. <laughs> Jacques Littlefield is a millionaire with a difference. On his vast estate, not far from San Francisco, he collects things. And we're not talking stamps or butterflies here. Jacques is into big machines in a big way. Tanks, trains, and organs. How long have you had the organ here? Well, it was put in in 1987, with additional work done in 1989 to add the, the lowest stop. So serious is Jacques about organs that he had one built in his own home. Gosh, it's absolutely beautiful. Well, thank you. We've had uh, a lot of fun in this room. Whilst this instrument produces a magnificent sound, what really gets Jacques's blood racing is how the thing works, its elegant mechanics. Oh, the heart of the beast. Absolutely, absolutely. Now, these are lots of modern materials here, but actually this is quite a straightforward old-fashioned design, isn't that's it? That's correct, that's correct. If you were to look at uh, um, a design from the uh, the 1700s or bring an organ builder there, they would recognize virtually everything other than the electrical lights and some of the uh, uh, aluminum parts and whatever. Mm. But... Yes, now these are the stop uh, pullers here, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, 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 these actuate the stops here, and then the, the pedals, uh, these are part of the pedal coupling mechanisms. And then these are the trackers. When you pull a key, it actually will uh, it will go from the key, and then it will actuate over here. Yeah. And if you have a stop or two pulled on, you can actually hear the sound at that point. When you're in a, this part of the organ, you're you're very happy, aren't you? Actually? Well, yeah. It's, it's I I did particularly ask the builder to allow it to, to be presentable from the back as well as the mm. front. But there's something about the fact that this is where the machine actually works. That's but this is the engine room, yeah. Yeah, it's sort of seductive, <laughs> isn't it? I can see absolutely, you're, absolutely. You're, you're very at home in, it, in this yeah. section. What I really want to do is have a go on it. Do you mind if I...? Absolutely. I'd love to. Love to, love to. One of the things that I enjoy the most is having organists come from, from far and near to, uh, to play and practice. Well, that's kind of have a play. <laughs> organ is the most mechanical of musical instruments, and as we'll see in this program, it has taken full advantage of 20th century technology. San Francisco to St. Albans, Hertfordshire, England. Yep, this is the place. St. Albans Organ Museum. Yeah. From the discovery of electricity to the creation of the microchip, the old-fashioned pipe organ has embraced new ideas and given birth to a plethora of mechanical and electrical offspring. 
Some of these children may be in obscure places, like the St Albans Organ Museum, but they are cherished lovingly nonetheless. Hello. Ah, Bill. Hello. Oh, Hi. <laughs> nice to see nice you. Nice to see you. What a fantastic collection you've got in here. It's amazing, isn't it? Um, how many have you got of them? Four of these large organs and a visiting one today. And what exactly are they all? All mechanical organs used in dance halls, roadhouses, cafes in Belgium originally. Yes. Belgium's a sort of capital place Indeed, for a yes. mechanical organ. Indeed, Antwerp particularly. Built yeah. around 1938, this one. Now, you say organ, but I can see a saxophone and a piano accordion yes. and well, bits of decoration. Hidden mm. behind oh, the wait facade. A minute. Ah, yes, there we are. found some pipes. I found some pipes. They're all in there, yes, hidden away. Yes. And, in fact, that one over there has mm. got um, a lot of kind of percussion and accordions and things stuck on the Yes, that's it? a much later one, the 1950s one. Yes. And this is jazz. We've got a, we've got a whole drum kit there. Um, yes. Does this play actual jazz tunes? Yes. Or, Quite like capable that? of playing practically anything, but particularly jazz-style music. Yeah. So they yeah. dance to this? Dance music yeah. is its prime thing. Yeah. Putting yes. musicians out of jobs? Probably. <laughs> but then the musicians weren't too reliable. Uh, <laughs> they couldn't go the on all it. night. Well, this this could. Um, can I hear something on this? Yes, if we come into a, a, a key a roll that you put in there. Yes, yes this is a uh, kind of roll library selection um, of music we have. Goodness, it's like old books, isn't it? Orient Express, Bell of the Ball, Toselli, Serenade, Liechtenstein, Polka. What's this? La Cuca Racha. You'd like is to hear that, that one? Yes. Oh, yeah. Fantastic. Put that one on. Yeah, so it's like a pianola, isn't it? With the um... perforated cardboard yep. set up in a four-part system. Yeah. Oh, there goes the blower. Yes. What is the fascination of mechanical organs? I mean, how did you get hooked? I don't know. I think it's a bit like steam engines. Once you're hooked, you're, <laughs> you're stuck with the things. Do you ever come in here on your own and just play them? Yes. <laughs> Usually in the Sunday morning before we open up for the public in the afternoon. You do this almost all the time, don't you? A large part of my time is taken up doing this, yes. Do you mind asking, do you have a wife? No, I don't think any woman would put up with me in all my organistic <laughs> goings on. You could maybe find someone who had this shared the same interest though. It's not for the lack of looking, but they all seem to be single as well. Is there a reason for that? It's hard not to come to the conclusion well, that the 20th century's mechanization of the organ has a habit of turning its admirers into fanatics. And with every feat of engineering, a new breed of organ lover comes to the fore. <laughs> it was inevitable, really, that an instrument that was so involved with things mechanical would one day have an intimate relationship with electronics. And in 1931, an American chap called Captain Richard Ranger invented an instrument that made it sound purely electronically. No wind and no pipes. He called it the Ranger Tone, and it disappeared without trace. However, four years later, Mr. Lawrence Hammond of Chicago invented his electronic organ and it immediately became the stuff of legend. From Jimmy Smith and Fat Swaller to Keith Emerson and the James Taylor Quartet, the Hammond B3 has been revered, abused and adored since the day it was born. <laughs> Hammond replaced pipes with 91 rotating tone wheels, producing a new bluesy sound. Lots of 
lots of people have made electric organs over the years, but what is it about the Hammond B3 that's become so special? That's a good question. I, I'm not sure. Is it just the sound? Uh, it, it must be. C certainly it's only the sound, yeah. yeah. Um, Jimmy Smith claims that he's aware of 3,000 different preset sounds that he will use. Yeah. You know, 3,000 different sounds coming from them, that's a lot more than you'll get out of the average synthesizer, I think. Yeah. Because you've got this drawbar combination, yeah. which comes from the original organ, you know, that goes right back to the original church. It is a church organ, yeah. I mean, basically. <laughs> I started going out and gigging in about 1981-82 and the Hammond was just a dirty word at that point. Mm. In fact, the one I bought, I bought off a woman that wanted to sell it so she'd get enough money to buy a, a Yamaha DX7, yeah. which, you know, does a very feeble Hammond yeah. impersonation. Uh, and, and I started carting it around people would say things like, couldn't you get that sampled or couldn't you get things like that, we'll do stuff like that. So what's going to happen now? In right, the well, Hammond still make a Hammond, you know, but they yeah. don't make a C3 tone wheel Hammond. If I wanted to buy one tomorrow, I probably couldn't. I'd have to sort of hassle someone and offer them money way over the odds yeah. because, because they are very trendy at the moment. <laughs> In the 1980s, the organ took what some would say was its most adventurous leap forward. Hammond organs don't have tone wheels inside them anymore. They make their sound digitally, as indeed do all the other many varieties of home keyboard that you can get in what has become a global market. Such is the enthusiasm for the home electronic organ that you can even go on a specially themed holiday. Yeah. This is the Keyboard Cavalcade Spring Spectacular at Haven Holidays, Caister on Sea. Why do you come to a thing like this? Because we enjoy the music. I like the easy listening. Yes. Andrew Lloyd Webber is one of my sort of favourite kinds of music. And would you come again next year if it happened again? Oh, yes, indeed. Yes. Yes. Even in a world devoted to the home enthusiast, there are star professional artists who travel the globe, demonstrating just what can be done with these organs if you practice hard enough. Will you please, ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together and give a great big keyboard cavalcade welcome to Chiho Sonomoto. Chiho was lured to the UK by Yamaha from her home in Japan. Now based in Newcastle, she is a concert virtuoso in her own right. This is really a sort of mini orchestra, isn't it? Because That's right. It's not mm -hmm. just organ pipe sounds, is mm -hmm. it? Right. Tell me the sort of sounds that you would have on this instrument. We have like a whole orchestra instrument, so like strings, horn, flute, yeah. bassoon. And um, what do you think it is about this instrument that makes it so popular with people? I think it's easy to make sound fantastic <laughs> play, you know what I mean? <laughs> For, for example, like a piano, it's very difficult, you have to practice a lot. Yes. But for organs, just plus one chord. And so you can be a conductor of a big band. Sometimes I have a concert in school for students. Oh, yes. uh, children. I do like uh, pops and heavy metals. And... So an organ like this can make a sort of heavy metal sound oh, as yes. well as everything else. Mm, no problem. Can I hear some? Yes, yes. Right, this is like heavy metal things. Heavy metal, right. Mm -hmm.
fantastic. Yes. Yeah. You're doing so much. Mm. Um, so it really is very versatile, isn't it, yes. as an instrument? Um, and you play orchestral as well and mm -hmm. jazz. And yes. So do you consider yourself a sort of ambassador for the organ? Hmm? For the electric organ, now you're an Sounds ambassador. Sounds like Diana. <laughs> <laughs> The queen of pipes. <laughs> queen of pipes. <laughs> so what was once a giant, immovable and complicated beast has now become a portable, easy-to-use domestic appliance. But of course, not everyone is a convert to this digital technology. Since 1915, this pipe organ at Balboa Park in San Diego has been giving delight to thousands of ordinary folk. Bob Plimpton is the resident organist at Balboa Park and a keen evangelist for the traditional pipe organ. As far as you're concerned, this is really about accessibility to people, isn't it? Yes, I mean, it is right here in the park and people can come and it's totally open, totally available to everybody and uh, weaves itself into the life of everybody. Do you think that it has too much of a sort of church connotation for some people? I don't, I don't think so. There are some people who do say, yeah, it's not like a funeral, but uh, we just ignore them. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's obviously going very well here at Balboa Park, but what about the organ in general? What's its future? Well, I really believe there's a growing appreciation for the organ as a musical instrument on its own and not just as a handmaiden to something else. And I find even in non-Western cultures, like in Japan mm. and so on, that uh, there's a growing interest in the pipe organ as a mm. musical expression. Now, I notice you say pipe organ. You don't think the digital organ will take its place? Oh, dear no. <laughs> Never. Why not? <laughs> <laughs> I think the digital organ will have its own place, but there's, there's just no replacement for the real sound of pipes with a real air going through them. But is Bob Plimpton right, or is Chiho Sonomoto's electronic orchestra about to make him redundant? Is the pipe organ now threatened with extinction by one of its own children? Thanks to modern technology, it is now possible for a digital chip to sample and imitate the actual sound of a pipe itself. Will these digital organs, cheaper and more portable than their predecessors, actually replace the traditional pipe organ? And is it possible to tell a difference in sound between the two? Well, here, in the Great Hall of Alexandra Palace, we've set up a little experiment. To help me with this, we have a random selection of music students who are going to hear the same piece of music played on a real organ and also on a digital one to see if they can tell the difference. My lovely assistant Caroline, hello Caroline. Hello Howard. We'll hand out the blindfolds. At the other end of the hall we have two fine organists. Alex Mason, who's going to play the 1876 Willis organ, which has 4,000 pipes, and Nick O'Neill, who is going to play a state-of-the-art Allen computer organ, which has no pipes. So Caroline, are the contestants ready? Yes, Howard. The contestants are all ready. Well, let us commence. We're going to hear some Louis Vienne from organ number one. Organ number two. Thank you, organists. And now for the jury. Would all those of you who thought that the real pipe organ was organ number one raise your pipes? 
Thank you. And all those of you who thought that the real pipe organ was organ number two, raise your pipes. Thank you. Now, please remove your blindfolds and lovely Caroline will tell us the naked truth. Which was the real pipe organ? Well, Howard, the real pipe organ was organ number two and the digital organ was organ number one. Thank you. Now, as you probably all now feel, some of you, about half of you got one and half of you got the other, um, which is uh, rather revealing, I think. I wonder, now, you're all music students, um, and you might have found it easier than, than the normal man in the street. Do you think for the, a normal person it would be impossible to tell the difference? Yes, I think they would, actually, because they were quite similar. If you've never heard one before, you would not know the difference. Mm. That's what I think. Of those of you who got it wrong, the choice, <laughs> uh, are you very sort of shocked that you got it wrong? I am. I mean, were you absolutely convinced? I thought, I thought you'd be able to hear the difference just like that. You know, it would be smaller, but it was actually, it was a big sound, yeah. which that I just was not expecting. Well, that's very interesting. Thank you very much for being guinea pigs on this occasion. <laughs> now, obviously, no experiment of this kind can be truly scientific, since every pipe organ has its own unique character. But the hung result of our jury does suggest that the digital newcomer is gaining ground fast. Of course, Pipe organs have been around for centuries, and it'd be a very foolish man indeed that would write them off at this stage. In 1993, a British builder, N.P. Manda, completed a sumptuous new pipe organ here at St. Ignatius Loyola in the heart of New York City. Like hundreds of others still being commissioned around the world, this glorious monster is undeniable proof that there's still plenty of fight left in real pipes. You know, I'm not much of a player these days. In fact, you could say I was bordering on the slightly crap. However, after 30 odd years, my passion for the organ is absolutely undimmed. And when I come and play an instrument like this for my own fun, I think, yep, there is a future for something so bold and so colourful and so beautiful. <laughs> 